most human beings are only living at about 40% of their capability. You take that challenge when you answer the call and you see the other side of pain. It's called glory. This is called glory. I have never seen anybody who did extraordinary feats that didn't have extraordinary issues. It is the passion that gives you the power you need, but it is the pain from which you have the conviction about it. If you had not been through some pains, you would not have the burning to do what you do. Everybody can serve. Anyone can be a leader. Listen, our gravestone, our gravestone has a day. A day when you were born and a day when you die. And they got a dash in between. And that dash defines what your legacy is. Work hard, you get what you gotta get. You don't work hard, you get nada. You get nothing. You gotta work hard. Work hard. You work hard, you get what you gotta get. You don't work hard, you don't get nothing. You don't get nothing. Nothing. Zero. Nothing. Zero. Nothing. Keep working. I was not the biggest, the strongest, or fastest, but my goals were clear. My actions were and still are in service of those goals. What wakes you up? What drives you? Why are you playing this game? Dr. Miles Monroe compares leaders to the king of the jungle, he says. He says the lion is not the tallest animal in the jungle. The lion is not the largest animal in the jungle. The lion is not the smartest nor the most intelligent animal in the jungle. And yet when the lion shows up, he is king. <laughs> He is king. You don't need to be intelligent. You don't need to be smart. You don't need to have a certain height. You don't need to have a certain weight. You don't need to have any kind of advantage, and yet you can be a leader. Four o'clock in the morning, I wake up. 4.30, 4.45, I'm doing some sort of cardio. Open these garage doors. It's still dark outside. I do this, and then I'll have breakfast, and then I will go do all my strength and conditioning training at a gym for about an hour, and then I'll go to set. We all average probably about five hours of sleep. It's 4.45 a.m. It's still dark outside. Look at that. The lights just went out, and I'm getting ready to kill this AM cardio. You can't even see me, but it's going to be so good, it's bad. Focus! If you do anything, you never want to do anything half-assed, especially when it comes to your training. Get in, be intense, execute on it, and then get out. For a lot of guys out there, and I was certainly one of those guys in my 20s, I thought I had all the answers, I didn't know shit. By the way, in my 30s, I'm still trying to find myself, as a lot of guys are out there. Hopefully when you hit your 40s, you're hitting a nice stride. If I'm gonna do it, I need to do this job right, I need to stay focused on it, I need to give the best effort I possibly can. We live down here in South Florida, it's hurricane season. Focus! Well, when it's time to go to the gym, we gotta get to the gym. And there ain't no stopping us. It's like I'm gonna be the baddest motherfucker walking it. All right, empty gym, the way we'd like it. It's Sunday, just finished my warm up. This pain ought to be fun. Focus! I work out twice before everyone wakes up. All right, workout number two. I'm out working all my competition. All right, Saturday afternoon, empty gym, the way we like it. It's leg day, which means it's gonna be sweaty, painful, and fun. Okay. So how do you make it? How do you overcome the odds? I don't know what to say, really. Three minutes to the biggest battle of our professional lives all comes down to today. We're in hell right now, gentlemen. Believe me. And we can stay here, get the shit kicked out of us, or we can fight our way back into the light. We can climb out of hell. Or you could be like me. Dream of pro football, get hurt, dream over. Find yourself with just seven bucks in your pocket. So how did I get here? by being the hardest worker in the room. Now it's time to see who has a heart. 
Now is the time to prove to yourselves and prove to everyone out there you are somebody. You are worthy of something. And you're able to do something special that no one else in the world can do. Are you ready to go out there and take what's yours? Yeah! What you worked hard for? Yeah! All of us in life have things we want. We don't get what we want. We get what we have to have. We all get what we tolerate in ourselves and other people. But when you're no longer willing to tolerate something, that's when your life changes. Everyone in the world has a list of things they think they should do. I should lose weight. I should work out. I should spend more time with my kids. I should work harder. I should make more calls. I should, I should, I should, I should. And then you know what? People don't do their shoulds and they get mad at themselves. They beat themselves up about it. What changes people is when your should becomes a must. When suddenly the thing you said should happen has to happen. That's when human beings change. It's like if you want to take the island and you're the head of the army and you want to take the island, the most powerful way to take the island is burn the boats. Because if there's no way to go back, it's amazing what happens when it's a must to do something versus a should. That's what makes human beings succeed. Ego is the success inhibitor. You have to do your best not to make decisions based off of ego for sure. Success and failure are generally slow processes. Either slowly building things up or gradually tearing them down. And that's why I say you've got to pay attention. You have to watch. You have to watch every single second. Because those seconds, they turn into minutes. And minutes turn into hours, and hours turn into days, and days turn into years. And so, that second, that second that just went by, that counted. And so did that second, and so did that one, and in the those precious seconds you are either building or you are decaying. You are either gaining ground or you are losing ground in that second and in every second. Every second. So, make every second count. The dream shattered, sent home with seven bucks in my pocket. I was like, wait, no, I gotta play in the NFL eventually. Those are my big goals, that's my dream. You realize that, that playing in the NFL was the best thing that never happened because it got me here. So my point is, look, you're gonna get your ass kicked. We're gonna get the shit kicked out of us. You gotta get up. You gotta have faith that the one thing you wanted to happen oftentimes is the best thing that never happened. So have faith and just keep that in mind and keep plugging away. When you crawl out from underneath the covers every morning and you sit on the edge of the bed, you have a choice before you. We're wired differently. We have to set a goal that if we hit that goal, we're guaranteed to make sure all that other stuff in the middle is gonna happen. Why three o'clock in the morning? Why don't you sleep? My appetite, my appetite. I say, ET, I want more, I can do more. If I accomplish this without a father, if I accomplish this with my mom being a teenage mom, if I accomplish this as a high school dropout, 
If I can accomplish these things from this start, now that I'm at this place, knowing what I know now, what can I accomplish? And I want you to think about that. I want you to think about more than just what you're going to do financially, more than what you're going to do in this industry in the next three years, right? More than that, what's your appetite? What are you, what are you going to do that will in, ensure that when the alarm clock goes off, that you are already up 10, 20 minutes before your alarm clock blows up? Why? Do the work. Do the fucking work. You've heard me say it before, no alarm clock needed, my passion wakes me up. Listen to me, no alarm clock needed. I can. I will. I must. Sometimes the only way to go about doing the work is get fucking raw and get fucking intense. Get angry and aggressive and make it fucking happen for yourself. You start today. I don't care when your life clock started ticking. You can start fucking right now today. If it's 4.15 a.m. in my world, and you're on the East Coast and it's 6.15 a.m. and you're already up and you're already dragging ass, by 6.16, you can change your fucking perspective of the world and of your life. My advice, fucking do it, do it, fucking do it, dig fucking deep and get it done. Do the work of your life. No alarm, I haven't used an alarm clock in over 20 years. What is it? Internally air. I want to be successful. I want to execute. I want to make all my dreams become a reality. I want to do everything I said I'm going to do. So my appetite increases. It gets stronger every year. I want more every year. I want to do more every year. I want to help more every year. I want to be bolder. I want to be better. I want to be stronger every single year. Every single year, your appetite should go up. You should never get settled. You should never get settled. You should never get content. Every single year. When you get content, when you settle, somebody's chasing you, somebody's coming from behind, and somebody's trying to take your spot. And so every single day when you wake up, you gotta set new goals, new benchmarks, you gotta raise it higher and higher and higher so you can make your dreams become a reality. True hunter, watch me, watch me. A true hunter is wired differently. He's wired differently. Doesn't have the same makeup. Listen to me, what makes a gazelle a gazelle is how he's wired. What makes a lion a lion? Okay, let me explain to you. When a lion sees a gazelle and the gazelle sees the lion, both beasts see each other at the exact same time. When the gazelle sees the lion because of how he's wired, he automatically, fear takes over. When the lion sees a gazelle, he lights up. It's showtime. The hunt is on, this is what I was made for. Do the work. Do the fucking work. Why do you want to work out? What is your goal? The most important thing is that you have a vision, that you have a goal. Because without that vision and without that goal, again, you're drifting around and you're never gonna end up anywhere. People don't become successful just by accident. You know, I mean, maybe the guy uh, that found gold in California and started the gold rush, but don't count on that. That's the one in a, in a lifetime kind of a situation. So you got to really have a specific goal. And to me, to have that vision that I want to be Mr. Universe, that I want to be the greatest bodybuilder of all time. That was a great vision and that specifically to look like Reg Park and to be up there on that stage and to lift the trophy overhead and to win the championship over and over and over again. So that was a great goal. You have to have a goal. Now it doesn't have to be that specific goal, but it has to have some goal. This is why I always recommend to people, sit down, take your time and start thinking about why do you want to work out? What is your goal? And that can be as crazy as it is. It, it could be, uh, you know, I want to impress girls. If that's your goal, so be it, but it motivates you. It could be that you're emulating a certain, uh, you know, bodybuilder or a certain football player, a certain boxer, whatever it is, have those pictures 
put all over the wall like I did when I was a kid. I put pictures of Rich Park and of Sonny Liston, of boxers and of Ali and of powerlifters and weightlifters all over my bedroom, uh, you know, uh, wall. So that every day when I go to sleep, every day when I wake up, I look at those pictures and they motivate me. You need that motivation and then therefore you have this kind of imprint in front of you all the time and you know exactly what you're chasing. People always came up to me and says, why are you smiling? You're working out five hours a day. You're doing the same as the other guys, but the other guys have a sour face. They're pissed off that they have to do another rep or another set or something. I looked forward to, I looked forward to another thousand set, uh, reps of, of sit-ups. I looked forward to another 500 pounds of, of, of uh, leg press or squat. I looked forward to doing more and more curls until my arms fall off. Why? Because I knew that every rep that I did and every set that I did and more weights that I lifted, I get one step closer to turning that vision into reality. So I was turned on by that. I was excited. I couldn't wait to get to the gym. I remember that when I weighed 245 pounds and Bob Rafelson, the director of Stay Hungry, said to me that I'm interested in having you come in for a reading and work on your acting and all this because I'm interested in having you in a movie to star with uh, Jeff Bridges and with Sally Fields. I was delighted about that and I was excited and I started pumping up more and more. And then he said, but I don't want you to weigh more than 210 pounds. He want me to be in the movie, but I'm weighing 245, 246. I say, I just won the Olympia, I say, in 19, which was 1974. And I was really at my biggest. And, uh, but he demanded that. And he says, look, it's very simple. On the day we start shooting, he says, I'm gonna put you on a scale. And if you don't make the 210, you're out. Because I have someone else in mind. And I worked on it, I started visualizing myself very clearly as a lean athlete because that's the only way I could lose that weight and all of a sudden get interested in running more because up until that point I ran like three miles after training or before training or whatever but now all of a sudden it was five miles, six miles, seven miles, eight miles and they even ran mini marathons in order to lose the weight and I did everything with high reps and I was watching my diet, what I eat and all those kind of things and but the day, the day before I remember we were in Birmingham, Alabama. The day before, I was at the YMCA with Bob Rafelson. He was swimming, and I was working out, and I was running. There was a track there, and I was running. He says, let's step on the scale. And I stepped on the scale, and I weighed 209. So it just shows to you what is possible if you visualize exactly what you want to look like. And there was no room for any kind of like, well, I can't get my act together or anything like this because there's only a certain amount of time. But the key thing again is have the clear vision. Have the specific goal of what you want to accomplish because then you never go to the gym and you say, the day I feel down a little bit, I don't know what it is all about. I don't know my life, I'm confused. No, I tell you that I was a perfect example of someone that was not confident at all. I mean, when I was a kid, I was just like any other kid. I had my hangups and problems and all this. But when I joined the weightlifting club and I won my first little trophy because I did the best clean and jerk, and then we went to another meet and I won another little trophy, I started feeling like somebody. But the bottom line is, everyone can use the same method because I used it in politics, I used it in making money, I used it in everything that I've done in the movie business. When you have one little victory, little victories add up and that is what gives you then ultimately confidence. Well, for me, the most important thing always is to have a deadline. Uh, so when I, for instance, uh, had a competition, 
and let's say the competition was in the middle of September, and it was now beginning of summer, so there was no more time to screw around. So there was the time now to get uh, going on a diet, to get going with the training, to not slack off at all because there was a deadline there. The day of the competition, I had to be in the best shape possible. And I knew that uh, if I come to the competition and I lose because I did not schedule my training the proper way, or I didn't have the right frame of mind, or I didn't give everything, literally worked my butt off, I would be just so angry. So I never wanted to be in that situation. So this is why it was very important to pick that time and to say, this is when I have to be in top shape, and then I work towards that. But it's not just with the competition. I mean, they're always the same in the movie business. I mean, to me, it was always a big advantage when I said, okay, my movie starts on April 1, and I have now three months, so I have to get really in great shape. So you pick those times. It could also be that you have no movie and you have no Mr. Olympia or no Mr. America, no Mr. Universe coming up or any of those things. But you say to yourself, the summer starts in June. I'm going to go to the beach in June. And at that time, I want to be in great shape. So that creates an urgency that makes you really start training hard and taking it seriously. Because if you don't have a specific plan, then you wander around. I mean, you can have, as I've told you many times, the best ship or the best plane in the world. But if you don't have a specific goal where you want to go and when you want to get there, you just drift around and you never get anywhere. So this is why it is so important to create that urgency and have a specific time when you want to be in shape. Well, I mean, Look, everyone has a problem with time, but the day is 24 hours and we sleep six. Now, I know there's some out there that say, whoa, 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 I need eight. Well, I say just sleep a little faster because the bottom line is we have six hours of sleep, 24 hours are available, so you have 18 hours now available to your work, your family, your hobbies, and also to learn something new or to do something new, which could easily be that you want to learn a new language or that you want to read as a, you know, a newest resolution, I have to read a book every week, or, or you say, I'm going to go and reshape my body. So you're going to go and take this hour out of your schedule and say, I'm going to train an hour every day. So this is for most people a, hu a huge challenge, but it is totally doable, I can tell them, because the kind of things that I did when I came to this country, I mean, I went to school, I was working in construction, I was working out my five hours a day, I was taking acting classes from eight o'clock at night to 12 midnight, I was doing all of those things. I wanted to make sure that out of the 24 hours of the day, that I don't waste one single hour. Those hours were too precious. And so there I just want to tell people, don't give me this thing, I have a difficult time with the time and I don't have time for this and I don't have that. You have time, you make the time. It's another early morning. Every morning, every day of our lives, we have choices to make. You have the choice to stay in bed to say, forget it, I'm not gonna work out today, or forget it, I'm not gonna work hard today. You always have a choice every single day of your life. So done today. No one cares what you did yesterday. You gotta change your dialogue. The yeah, I used to be mentality doesn't work. What have you done today to better yourself? Today's another day. Today's another day that I'm faced with another choice to make. So I'm making the choice again to put my shoes on early in the morning and get acting again. Make the right decision. Well, some of you read that I think about when it's hot outside, that it's sunny and 70. Well, it's fucking not today. It's the reality, if it's about 90 degrees and 100% humidity, but who gives a shit? That being said, September 3rd, I had to have my book turned in. And what I realized, I'm reading this book a lot, but I realized I wasn't born this motherfucker. I made him. At the bottom of insecurities, fear, self-doubt, lies, was me buried in the fucking fetal position. How I got out of that, was recognizing it, being honest with it, 
being truthful with it and then fixing it. We like to live on social media with lies about ourselves, how great we are. Get to the source and fix the problem. I'm a big believer in doing something that sucks every single day of your life. I believe it's a key component into strengthening your mind. Every day you're trying to find more of what you're capable of. And that's the big question. What are you capable of? Stop doing the things that you do every day. You run every day, go swim. Flipping a towel, one tire for a mile. It'll definitely build something. So, I'm all about cows in the mind. Do something that sucks. Don't get it twisted. It's not about flipping tires. I'm in Las Vegas right now and it's hot as shit. It's not about any of that. But what it is about is a lot of us give total control to life. We don't have any control of it. We just give all control to life. I do this shit every morning to prepare my mind for what life's gonna throw at me. A healthy body gives you a healthy mind. That's what it's about. So I just got back from a long run and what I realized for myself and for a lot of people is that life is one big tug of war between mediocrity and trying to find your best self. So there's tricks to all this crap in life. Life is one big head game. One trick in this situation is, so I didn't want to run, so what did I do? I figured out a couple of things. You have to sometimes let mediocrity think that you're giving into it. So I said, you know what, instead of going for a 20 miler, I'm just gonna go out for an easy six or seven. What that did to my brain was it said, okay, mediocrity thought it won. So it let loose a little bit. It let go of that, oh, this is gonna suck. This could be okay, it's not too bad. The second you get to mile two, guess what happens? Greatness pulls mediocrity in the fucking mud. Get out there and get after it. You wanna go in about the right mindset, the right gear. In combat, you wear body armor. But what we do wrong is we don't strengthen our minds. You gotta strengthen your mind, take control of that. So then when you get out in the real world and they fuck you up, you got protection. So I'm about 15 miles from home and I, I often talk about taking souls. This morning, this person, I usually train alone. This person wanted to run with me. And I said, fine, we'll run 15. This morning comes, there's storms coming in this way. And the person calls and said, hey, why don't we do it tomorrow? Taking souls is when I told the motherfucker, I'm gonna run 15 today and I'll run with you again tomorrow. That's what taking souls is about. Don't worry about the elements and what's going on. You gotta get out there and get it. He wasn't the only one that thought about taking the day off. Cause the storm is coming in right now and there's not a soul out here but me. If you want to get better, do the shit that no one else wants to do. Do the shit that no one else is even thinking about doing. At the end of the day, hard work may not be enough. You still may fail. Just stay at it and go at it. more things you can do, get outside that zone. That zone is that zone that makes you feel good. The stronger your mind's gonna get, the 
starts getting used to doing shit like this. It's not fun. My mind's used to it. When that alarm clock goes off, there's at least 50% of the time where you just, that, that soft little pillow is just caressing your head and you want to stay there. And it takes discipline to go, nope. I'm gonna get up out of this bed and I'm gonna do what I'm supposed to do. We all average probably about five hours of sleep. Work hard, sleep less. Tomorrow morning, when that alarm goes off and you start feeling all the excuses that come in and that bed is cozy, I know what you're saying, I love my bed too. And you then go five, four, three, two, one and you get up. That discipline that you have at that moment, you win that fight. That's a big victory. And then that, that, that pattern will carry out throughout the day. Because once you're up, well now that I'm up, I might as well go work out because I'm already up and I, I feel good that I got up out of bed and I won that battle. Let me go win another battle. I'm gonna go get it done. And that discipline carries on throughout the day. So now you take that and you, you expand that out over a week and a month and you end up with more discipline. And it starts with that simple act of getting up and getting out of bed in the morning. I work out twice before everyone wakes up. So it started off four o'clock in the morning where I'd start and I'd start with my cardio, then I'd have breakfast, and then I would go to the gym, and then I'd go to work. And I wake up at 4.30 in the morning because no one else is awake yet. So that gives me the opportunity to do things that I need to get done, kind of selfishly for myself. And the big one in that category is working out. And it doesn't feel good at 4.30 when you get up, but by the time seven o'clock rolls around and you've already worked out and you've already gotten some, some work done, and you've got some time to say goodbye to your kids before they go to school, it's infinitely better than sleeping in until 6.45 and you get out of bed and now you're, you missed your kids going to school or, or whatever. You, you, you're not prepared for the day. It's, it's awful. Wake up at the same time every day. And if you pick that time and you start waking up at the same time every day, that's very good for you. It doesn't have to be 4.30. It could be 6.30. It could be 7. I, I don't know what your personal schedule is. Find out a time, pick it, set it, stick to it. Look. Everyone has a problem with time, but the day has 24 hours and we sleep six. Now I know there's some out there that say, whoa, 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 I need eight. Well, I say just sleep a little faster because the bottom line is we have six hours of sleep, 24 hours are available, so you have 18 hours now available to your work, your family, your hobbies, and also to learn something new or to do something new, which could easily be that you want to learn a new language, to read a book every week, or you say, I'm gonna go and reshape my body. So you're gonna go and take this hour out of your schedule and say, I'm gonna train an hour every day. So this is for most people a huge challenge, but it is totally doable, I can tell them, because the kind of things that I did when I came to this country, I mean, I went to school, I was working in construction, I was working out my five hours a day. I was taking acting classes from eight o'clock at night to 12 midnight. I was doing all of those things. I wanted to make sure that out of the 24 hours of the day, that I don't waste one single hour. Those hours were too precious. And so there I just want to tell people, don't give me this thing, I have a difficult time with the time and I don't have time for this and I don't have that. You have time, you make the time. Sometimes even if you're the most highly motivated person in the world, that grind starts to beat you down a little bit. And that's when you have to stop looking at the short-term thing, because that's not, that's not getting you to, to get it done. And you gotta look, okay, what is the long-term goal that I'm looking at? What am I really trying to get done in the long-term? And you say, oh, you know what? I'm actually waking up today early so I can be ahead of the curve, so I can sell more of these widgets or whatever, so that I can buy a house. And you know what, today matters. Today matters. This decision that I'm making right now is that first step. It's me taking one stroke, swimming in the right direction, heading towards the shore. And if I don't take this, I'm not making any progress. I've been struggling, struggling, struggling. We still had all the same problems. I, we still had a lien on the house, still facing bankruptcy, still fighting like crazy. I was still unemployed. The next morning, the alarm goes off and um, I pretended NASA was there. It's the stupidest story. I literally went five, four, three, two, one. I counted out loud and then I stood up. And I, I'll never forget standing there. And for the first time in three months, I had beaten my habit of hitting the snooze button. I couldn't believe it. And I thought, wait a minute, counting backwards? That is the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my entire life. Well, the next morning I used it again and it worked. The next morning I used it again and it worked. The next morning I used it again and it worked. And then I started to notice something really interesting. There were moments all day long, all day long, 
just like that five second moment in bed where I knew knowledge what I should do. And if I didn't move within five seconds, my brain would step in and talk me out of it. Every human being has a five second window, might even be shorter for you. You have about a five second window in which you can move from idea to action before your brain kicks into full gear and sabotages any change in behavior. Because remember, your brain is wired to stop you from doing things that are uncomfortable or uncertain or scary. It's your job to learn how to move from those ideas that could change everything into acting on them in the smallest moment. When I was in high school, I, I uh, early on, about 16 years old, I decided I wanted to become president of the United States. Because I thought, how can I contribute the most to society? And I went to a seminar by a man named Jim Rohn. He's still a seminar speaker. And I took a week's pay. I was working $40 a week as a janitor. And um, it was $35 for the evening seminar. So it was a big decision. And I listened to him speak. And I came out so inspired. Because most of what he said, I already believed. And now as an authority figure saying, you really can be this way. Why pay the price? Why work this hard? Why go this far? Why try to learn this much? Why try to do it all? Why try to see it all? Why try to have it all? Why do it? Why learn it? Why study? Why put yourself out? Why try to take on this much responsibility? Why develop yourself to the full? Why try to become all that you can possibly become? Why try to earn as much as you can earn, share as much as you can share, develop every skill you possibly can, see every human you possibly can, go to every class you possibly can, touch everybody you possibly can? Why do that much? Why go that far? Why share that much? Why give that much away? Why try to see everything? Why try to do everything? Why try to become everything? That's a good question, why? And you're the only one personally that can answer that question for yourself. You've got to have your own list of why. Work on your list of whys. If the why is powerful, the how is easy. If you want a thing bad enough to go out and fight for it, to work day and night for it, to give up your time, your peace, and your sleep for it, if all that you dream and scheme is about it, and life seems useless and worthless without it, and if you gladly sweat for it and fret for it and plan for it, and lose all your terror of the opposition for it, and if you simply go after that thing that you want with all of your capacity, strength and sagacity, faith, hope, and confidence, and stern pertinacity, if neither cold, poverty, famish, or gold, sickness or pain of body and brain can keep you away from the thing that you want, dogged and grim, you besiege and beset it. With the help of God, you'll get it. But if the why isn't strong, if your goals aren't powerful, if the vision isn't clear, the old prophet said, without a vision we die, without a vision we perish, without a dream we're nothing. And because he spoke, how people live their lives is a result of the story they believe about themselves. He interrupted the story that I believed about myself. Work on your list of why. Make no small plans, for they have no magic to stir men's blood. Make large plans, for they do have magic to stir men's blood. Impossible is not a fact, it's an opinion. It's your opinion, and they'll say, no, science shows. And I say, yeah, and how many times has science shows something's impossible, now science shows it's possible. It, things are impossible until somebody does it. Divorce the story of your limitation and marry the truth of your unlimited capacity, then the whole game changes. Success is born out of luck. It's awareness of mind that takes advantage of that opportunity. You will all be confronted with opportunity. 
you must take advantage of it. Because if you don't take advantage of your opportunity, you'll never realize your dreams. Whether you want them or not is an irrelevance. You don't know that until you achieve it. But most people have strategies available, or they could get them, or you could create them. But the problem is you got a story. And your story is why it isn't working. And the story is, I've tried everything. If you tried everything, you'd be fit. If you tried everything, you'd be profitable. If you tried everything, you'd be there. But people say it. I was born onto a council estate. Getting a job at the Hotel St. George was my passport to escape the world that I was born into, to start a new world. Do I have what it takes? I said to myself, yes. So I started pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing. It's about self-belief at whatever cost. You can do more than this. If I had to walk, I had to walk. It just became just a process of grinding and grinding. And grinding is not even a good word for it. It's not even a good word for it. And just, just going further and further. And then when I got through running, I go to the bike. I go to the pool. If I got tired somewhere, my legs are tired, I, I go to the gym. And I developed this crazy workout where I was doing volume. Things don't happen overnight. You have to make the emotional and the personal investment to make your dreams come true. You never throw in the towel. And if I threw in the towel, pick it up. Never give in. Never, ever, ever give in. And when you're young, it's very easy to give in, to walk away. It really is. So whatever you want to do in your life, don't overwork it, don't overthink it, and you'll realize your dream. Trust me. The question isn't, can you handle the situation? The question is, can you handle your mind? Can you manage the thoughts and the emotions that are trying to poison your progress? Forget managing the situation. Manage your mind. No matter whose fault it is that something is broken, if it's your responsibility to fix it, it's not somebody's fault if their father was an abusive alcoholic, but it's for damn sure their responsibility to figure out how they're gonna deal with those traumas and try to make a life out of it. It's not your fault if your partner cheated and ruined your marriage, but it is for damn sure your responsibility to figure out how to take that pain and how to overcome that and build a happy life for yourself. Fault and responsibility do not go together, it sucks, but they don't. When something is somebody's fault, we want them to suffer, we want them punished, we want them to, to pay, we want it to be their responsibility to fix it, but that's, that's not how it works, especially when it's your heart. Your heart, your life, your happiness is your responsibility and your responsibility alone. Fear is not real. The only place that fear can exist is in our thoughts of the future. It is a product of our imagination causing us to fear things that do not at present and may not ever exist.
as long as we're pointing the finger and, and, and stuck in whose fault something is, we're jammed and trapped into victim mode. When you're in victim mode, you are stuck in suffering. The road to power is in taking responsibility. Your heart, your life, your happiness is your responsibility and your responsibility alone. We always talk about hunger and how you always want to outwork your competition regardless of how successful you may be lucky enough to be. You want to be hungry. If you know what it's like to be hungry, you'll never be full. It's one thing to be hungry. It's another thing when you're starving for greatness and starving for success. What if? A lot of times I'll be in a 200 mile run or something like that and I'm all jacked up. Body's broken, mind's broken, spirit's broken. I start to say, what if I can pull this off? Greatness, it's in my DNA. I know what it's like to operate every single day, regardless of the success that I've been a lucky son of a bitch to achieve. I operate every day as if I'm starving. It's the what if I can pull off a fucking miracle. What if I can become someone that no one thinks I can be? Is this that, just me talking about that? I have the hair going up on my arm because it makes me just like, what if? When you're trying to get better in life, the grind's forever, there is no end. There is no countdown. As long as you're breathing, you gotta keep trying to get better. You've never arrived in life. Stay hard. A lot of people say that nothing's impossible. Shit, I even said that nothing's impossible several times in my life. I lied. There's a lot of things that are impossible for you to do. But what happens is when we come across something that's very hard and we try it once or maybe twice, we then say, we're done, we can't do it anymore. Before you say something's impossible, do it and do it and do it to a level that people think that you might be fucking crazy until you say it's impossible. People want to know where I find my strength at. Where I get my strength, I get it from a lot of places. But right now, this morning, I'm getting it from there's not a motherfucker that's up. There's not a car, there's not a person. Everybody's in their bed, sleep, dreading that it's a Monday. Hey, this a Monday. And I'm loving it. I'm loving that where everybody's getting weaker, I'm getting stronger. It's not about the running, the swimming, the push-up, the sit-ups. It's about what those things do for your mentality. You don't get better on a daggone couch. You get better by coming out here and getting the fuck after it every daggone day. Stay hard. It's one thing to be hungry, it's another thing when you're starving for greatness and starving for success. The people in the world become weaker people. It's by capping your brain, it's by putting this kind of garbage in it about not attacking what you're not good at. It's about putting a cap on managing your expectations. If I lived that way, if I had any kind of thought process like managing expectations, I would be a 400 pound man by now, working some job that made no money, and I would not, never know my capabilities. I would never have become a Navy SEAL. I never went to ranger school. All these things I did. The mind is a medieval motherfucker. It's constantly fighting against you. It's the only thing in the history of the fucking world that shows up on time every time. It has a tactical advantage over you. It knows your fears. It knows your insecurities. It knows everything about you. It might be the only thing in that world that knows all about you. You gotta know about it. It's gonna show up when you don't wanna show up. It's gonna show up at the worst time possible when you wanna be successful. It's gonna say, take the easy road. Take the easy way out. You gotta learn 
your brain like your brain has learned you. The mind is the battleground. It is the place where the greatest conflict is. There are more people in this room having trouble in their mind than there are people having trouble in their finances. The struggle is in your mind. This is why we have people who go to bed tired and wake up tired. Slept eight hours and you wake up still tired. The reason you wake up tired is that you got sleep but you didn't get rest. Your mind has been in turmoil all night long. You've been wrestling in your sleep. Have you ever woke up and your bed was wet? The bed is all torn, just like you've been in a fight because your mind has not rested. Your body went to sleep, but your mind is still caught up in a warfare. Your mind is the battleground. Enemies after your mind. Out to worry you to death, out to stress you to death, out to break you down, out to make you quit, out to make you think that you can't get up, out to make you give up on your dream. The warfare is in your mind. It's not in your checkbook. It's not in your savings account. It's not on your job. The fight that you got to fight is in your mind. You'll see a fight sometimes, you'll see a fighter, and I mean that fighter is getting his ass whooped. From pillar to post, he's getting knocked down, beat up, eyes black and bloody, face beaten, and everybody is wondering. Why don't he just quit? Why don't they just stop? If you really want your life to work, then you're gonna have to give. And get on the goddamn road and stick your thumb out and fucking hitchhike. Start walking now. Nobody is gonna hand you the fulfillment of the dream you have in your mind about a great life you want to live. Don't write me and tell me that in five years you picture yourself as a pro wrestler, but when you answer other portions of the questionnaire, you're not even in the gym yet. This is what's wrong with people today. This is what's wrong with people today. They think that great lives just fall out of the sky. If they dream hard enough, fantasies hard enough and long enough they keep stroking that that their life will turn out just the way they dream it's a fly you're feeding yourself every day a lie why would they continue to fight why would they continue to go on even though they are being beaten all across the ring, the octagon, or the wrestling mat. Why would they do that? What would make them do that? Your life will not wait for you to quit telling yourself lies. It will go by and your whole life will be a lie. And the answer is simple. They cannot help themselves because they are a fighter. And being a fighter, it is inbred in them to fight. No matter how difficult or lost the situation may seem, they cannot help themselves. It's impossible 
for them to stop fighting. So don't write me and tell me that kind of shit. I just don't care. I don't care. I want, with every part of my being, for every human being to succeed in life. At, at the dreams that they have. But I don't give a shit if you fail. I've never met any human being who didn't have it within themselves to succeed at life. But I've met plenty who choose to. And if that's your attitude, that, you're cho that you choose to, and you're waiting for somebody to rescue you, don't waste my time. All I want to do is give you some tools with an intense emphasis in the way that only I can and try to bury them, knock them into your head so you get out there and you kill it at life. Woo! <laughs> when I'm doing nose dives in the parking lot, will I continue to fight? Yes! The answer is yes. When I'm laying in a hospital bed, with tubes and needles sticking out my ass. Will I continue to fight? Yes! When I'm laying dead on this book, will I continue to fight? But yes! Woo! I can't help myself. Why do you do it? I can't help myself. I'm a fighter. And that's what fighters do. Until the good Lord throw the towel in on CT Crutcher, I am going to continue to fight until my corner man throw the towel in. Until my referee stops the fight, I'm going to continue to fight. A lot of people say, oh, I just want to sort of, they kind of, they're kind of dabbling in the idea of improving themselves. And the real way to do it is you got to write down what the fuck you want and then go after it. If you decide, I'm going to get down to bang, I'm going to do this, I'm going to run a marathon in less than five hours, I'm going to, you know, whatever the fuck it is, you got to write that shit down and go for it. Well, my workout, I schedule every Sunday, I schedule everything that I'm going to do during the week. I say, I have to do yoga two times this week, I have to lift weights three times this week, I have to run twice this week, and however I fit that in, I fit that in, but I owe those things. And you don't need two and a half hours. You can get a great workout in 40 minutes, and that's all you need for the whole day, 100%. Yes. You know, this idea of time, like how much time did you put in today? Like, you could work out in a bullshit manner for two hours and not get nearly as much done as you can for a half hour hard just yeah. running. So I have to get those things in. The only exceptions are injuries and sickness. I do everything that I can to put my body and my brain in a good place so that I'm, I'm, I'm keeping my engine smooth. I'm changing my oil, I'm changing my spark plugs, I'm making sure that it's operating. I mean, it's not gonna be perfect, but the, yeah. I know that I've done my best to keep it working the best that it can. There's consequences that you pay to constantly seeking comfort and, and avoiding discomfort and avoiding hard work. And those consequences are you're never going to feel self-realized, you're never going to feel like you accomplished anything, you're never going to have this feeling of understanding that difficulty and struggle and, and the ability to push through that is a muscle. And you develop that muscle Correct. by doing it. And once you do, you develop a lot of self-satisfaction and you develop peace of mind and you, you understand that you can overcome obstacles. If you don't have to overcome obstacles, you never know whether or not you can. Unless you are faced with actual adversity, you don't understand how you're going to feel and how you're going to react when you overcome that adversity. Fine. Things that are difficult, when you do these difficult things, you're stressing your mind or I should say, don't even stress in your mind, exercising your mind. 
and exercising your body's ability to manage intense situations. It's hard, it's very difficult, it's very testing. And in doing so, you, you lessen the stress of regular life. The more stressful situations that I experience, the more I understand what they are and the more I can relax. But it's also like the ma a matter of constantly being exposed to these stressful situations where there's not a long break in between doing stand-up or a long break in between martial arts training where to, to, to the point where anxiety can build up and then once you get into it it's almost an it's an unusual situation instead of a, a usual one what I tell people is the best advice that I, I've ever heard it's the best advice I ever came up with is that live your life like you're the hero in your movie right now is when the fucking movie starts and your life is a shitbag disaster. Pretend you are, uh, right now, you are in the part of the movie that starts and it shows you as a fucking loser. And just decide not to be a loser anymore. Live your life like there's a documentary crew following you around and you are analyzing your own behavior. Do what you would want to do so that your kids one day would look back at it and, and, and see that documentary and look on it with pride like wow my dad was a bad motherfucker he really did what he had to do wow my mom really got her shit together i love a success story but even more than a success story i like a dude who fucks his life up and then gets it back together again story those are my favorite stories and the way to do that you gotta write shit down you gotta think that you are the hero in your own fucking movie and then you gotta sit down and you gotta write shit down write down what you need to do Truth. The truth is, if you work hard, you can achieve your goal. Truth. It's not a question anymore. Yeah. You know what I mean? A moment like this proves it. When you had the question, man, I'm doing this cardio in the morning. Is it worth it? Yeah. Man, I'm doing these deadlifts today. And I feel tired. Is it going to be worth it? Yeah. Man, you know what? I got to go to the gym and train today after I've had an entirely difficult work day. Man, I've got these other challenges that are pulling on me, pulling on my concentration. You know what? Is this extra effort worth it? Fast forward, stand here in this yeah. moment. Forget everything else. Forget everything else. Forget that there was any sunlight left. What would you spend today thinking about? Yourself or the man that's beside you? Or the man that you know you'd give everything in your heart for? We get one opportunity in life. One chance in life to do whatever you're going to do, to lay your foundation, to make whatever mark you're going to make, whatever legacy you're going to leave, leave your legacy. And it's found through effort. Wins and losses come a dime a dozen. But effort, nobody can judge effort. Because effort is between you and you. Effort ain't got nothing to do with nobody else. So that team that think they're ready to see you, Because every day is a new day. Every moment is a new moment. So now you got to go out and show them that I'm a different creature now than I was five minutes ago. Because I'm pissed off for greatness. Because if you ain't pissed off for greatness, then that means you're okay with being New York. There ain't no man in here okay with being just basic. So let's do what we do tonight. Take ownership. Take extreme ownership. Don't make excuses. Don't blame any other person or any other thing. Get control of your ego. Don't hide your delicate pride from the truth. Take ownership of everything in your world, the good and the bad. Take ownership of your mistakes, take ownership of your shortfalls, take ownership of your problems, and then take ownership of the solutions that will get those problems solved. Take ownership of your mission. 
Take ownership of your job, of your team, of your future, and take ownership of your life. And lead. Lead. Lead yourself and your team and the people in your life. Lead them all to victory. Huh? You think it's a game? This is real. This is real life, champ. Work hard, you get what you gotta get. You don't work hard, you get nada. You get nothing. You gotta work hard. Work hard. You work hard, you get what you gotta get. You don't work hard, you don't get nothing. You don't get nothing. Nothing. Zero. Nothing. Zero. Nothing. Keep working. Work hard. You get what you gotta get. I'm gonna grind. I'm going to fight. I'm going to work. I'm going to press toward. I'm going to learn. I'm going to do everything in my power. Every single day. I'm going to do everything in my power to become a victor and not a victim. Let's go, champ. Let's go, champ. Pain go, is champ. temporary. It may last for a minute or an hour, or a day, or even a year. But eventually, it will subside. And something else will take its place. If I quit, however, it will last forever. And so every time something get hard, you quit, you call mama. I dare you to take a little pain. I dare you. I dare you not to go home. Somebody said, I don't go home, I feel bad. Go, go through it. You ain't gonna die at the end of pain and success. You're not gonna die because you're feeling a little pain. Be committed beyond circumstance and be committed beyond compartmentalization, meaning my greatness and my excellence can't be compartmentalized to an individual, to an environment, to a circumstance, meaning it is my essence. I show up and I want to impact because this is who I am as an individual. It's my essence, meaning when the adversity and the opposition hit, like the only thing I've been trained to do was to think positive and look positive. I reverse engineered it. The only thing I need is breath in my body and I'm gonna flat out go and get it. I know how you feel. You went to bed last night. Had all these ideas about how you're going to get up this morning. It's going to be different. Things are going to be different. Today you're going to start. Start taking steps towards doing some of those projects that you know will get you closer to living that dream life you keep playing over and over in your head. Different from the practical life that you've got to get up and meet every day to go to the cubicle infested world and work a job just to pay the bills. Put gas in the gas tank to take you places where you don't really want to go to be around people you don't enjoy being around. Put groceries in a refrigerator. Groceries that keep you fat and lazy, keep you away from being healthy and fit in your life. Pay the mortgage on a house that doesn't inspire you, it's just a nuisance and you hate coming home to. What the fuck are you doing? And you know what makes it even worse is that you cower. Before you got from the bedroom to the kitchen, Mr. Ugly was there. Mr. Resistance, right in your ass, telling you what you were going to do different than what you want to do and what the inner voice inside of you tells you you need to do with your life. Telling you that those things that you believe matter and have a purpose in your life really don't, that the silly, the superficial, the stupid does. Watching some mind-numbing TV, making that list you need to go to the store next time. 
making those phone calls to those people and just chit-chatting and gossiping about dumbass things. Mr. Resistance will be there every morning, morning, noon, and night. And while you are sleeping, right in your ass, kicking your ass, unless you turn around and you start throwing punches. You know what my bottom line goal with One More Your Nation is? Is to have everybody out there realize that there is something better for you to do with your time than even being here. Right now, I am Mr. Resistance. I'm distracting you from doing the work you need to do. Get the fuck out of here and do the work of your life. How can a person start something and be on fire, but the moment something doesn't go the way that they want it to go, they're not the same individual? I've been on this quest to figure out how can a person be on fire and say, man, this is what I've been put on this earth to do. But the moment a couple of things don't come back the way that they thought it would come back, they're not the same individual. And the words that they once spoke, it means nothing to them. I've been on this quest to figure out how can a person get on a journey to dreams, goals, and aspirations. And the moment they hit opposition, adversity, or challenge, it doesn't mean anything to them anymore. I have invested more than 20 years of my life in the belief and the idea of being able to come to the Olympia and to do the absolute best, despite whatever the opposition, whatever said, whatever the beliefs are, on stage, off stage, whatever the oppositionary forces have been, my resolve has been to respond as a champion and just aim to represent the better thought of what that means to me. You don't get this far. You don't get to this point and just stop. It doesn't happen like that. It's always worth it to do your best and to believe in something and to work towards the attainment of the goal. And if it is, that you have to expand your vision, then you climb higher and you do that and you don't be afraid to. It's not possible to be training harder or more consistently or more dedicated than me because I couldn't give a single ounce more to any aspect of this thing that I'm doing. So that makes me feel pretty powerful and pretty confident. Truth. The truth is if you work hard, you can achieve your goal. Truth. Yeah. It's not a question anymore. Yeah. You know what I mean? A moment like this proves it. When you had the question, man, I'm doing this cardio in the morning, is it worth it? Yeah. Man, I'm doing these deadlifts today and I feel tired, is it going to be worth it? Yeah. Man, you know what, I got to go to the gym and train today after I've had an entirely difficult work day. Man, I've got these other challenges that are pulling on me, pulling on my concentration. You know what, is this extra effort worth it? Yeah. Fast forward, stand here in this yeah. moment. What does it feel like? It feels like, yes. Yeah. My heart been pumping, my body been getting hot. I thought I was nervous. I said, damn, man, I fumbled twice before the game. I was nervous. Yeah, I look around, I see some people face got the same as mine. I said, oh, man, they can't be nervous. Ain't no way they're nervous. I ain't nervous. My heart slowed down a little bit. My heart slowed down a little bit. I ain't nervous no more. I'm like, all right, all right, I'm good. Come back. He come back. I'm like, damn, what is this feeling? What is this feeling? I'm like, am I scared? I look away. I look away. I'm like, oh, he, he got a bad face I got. He can't be scared. He ain't scared. I ain't scared. What's this feeling? What's this feeling? I look around. It's adrenaline. I'm ready. Nobody but you think you can win.
It's one game around the world, and somehow it blessed us, and it's here. It's here. Because don't nobody but the people in this locker room think you got a fucking chance to bust their ass. Yeah. But I'm a dog. I got some dogs. Yeah. Yeah.